Stop using the AK-47 in Caldera. This map is filled with long-range engagements unlike for dance because of the verticality all over it, and you can't afford to have inaccurate weapons like the AK-47 and the EM-2 for that matter. Those are the old meta, and it's time we found a new set of meta weapons. Why would you use these guns that shoot 50 feet up into the sky with recoil? It has never been more important to use low recoil weapons, and I have one for you today that not only has a beam, but has a competitive TTK to these old meta weapons. The STG is incredible, and I'm going to go over some stats to show you why the STG is the new meta, and give you the best no recoil class setup for it. Welcome back, I'm Austin, and this is PCG Productions. The three pillars of a meta weapon in Warzone are ease of use, TTK, and movement, and without any of those three things, nothing will be used widely around the entire community. And I'm going to show you why the STG triumphs over the AK-47 by diving straight into these stats. The funny part about this comparison is that the STG is actually the same weapon as the AK-47 when it comes to fire rate, damage, and TTK. They're both going to have a 600 fire rate, which is below average, going to make them a little bit less forgiving when you miss shots, and then they're going to have identical damage profiles at close and long range, where they have a 1.5 times headshot multiplier with equal damage from chest to limbs, making their TTKs feel super consistent. And you always want that damage to be consistent at long range, mainly because it's a lot easier when you're out at 100 meters to be hitting maybe the lower torso or the limbs, and that would lower your TTK if you don't have that consistent damage profile. So, so far these weapons are looking pretty solid, both of them, but now they're going to have their TTKs be the same because their fire rate and damage are equal, so of course their TTKs will be identical. You can't really change the time to kill if the damage and fire rate are equal, so 600 milliseconds at close range, which is pretty solid, and then you can lower their TTKs with two headshots to 500 milliseconds, which is definitely really good. Later on in the video, we're going to get to why the STG can actually improve upon that time to kill and lowering it, but for now, we're going to move over to the long range time to kill, and that's the same story where they're both 700 milliseconds, and you need two headshots to lower their time to kills by 100 milliseconds back down to 600. And any of these TTKs at long range being below 750 milliseconds is going to be a possible meta weapon because that's about the cutoff point if it's above 750 milliseconds it's going to kill too slow to compete against the top tier weapons and at this point you're probably wondering why would i use the scg over the ak-47 when they're the same exact weapon and i already have the ak leveled up well let's get started into making that argument happen and that's going to start with the base range where the scg does have a big time advantage of 30 meters compared to only 25 for the ak-47 you're going to be wondering that's only five meters is that really worth it well that's actually a 20 percent increase and when you stack attachments on top of that it compounds making it a bigger and bigger gap and if we're speaking on attachments on vanguard weapons you can use 10 or you can only use five of them on cold war or modern warfare weapons they really haven't balanced that out too well right now and it just allows you to have a huge advantage when using vanguard weapons because you can specialize these any way you want whether you want to build out something for close range or a sniper support or a long range build like we're going to do right now each vanguard weapon has multiple stat profiles with abilities to change fire rate damage and damage multipliers and this allows us to create weapons that are more user friendly or higher skill depending on what we're going for and what type of player you are i already hinted at this earlier in the video but the ak-47 already wasn't the most accurate gun in verdansk but they nerfed its recoil even more because the developer wants the meta to be vanguard weapons so you have to buy their game and level up their weapons that way and the scg is a million times more accurate because of this and much easier to use at long ranges and on caldera that's more important than time to kill because you're going to be getting in way more long range engagements because of the verticality even though the map is actually the same size because of all the mountains and hills low ground high ground you're going to be finding yourself in a lot more hundred meter engagements so accuracy is king and that's why the AK-47 is not meta, and neither is the EM-2 even though it has potential for a slightly higher TTK at range, and its accuracy is way worse and is unforgiving with its fire rate making it unviable in Caldera. And with the AK-47 having the same time to kill and fire rate, why would you ever use this over the STG when it's more accurate? And if I haven't already convinced you, let's look into these stats a little bit further where they're going to have equal damage per second and equal damage per mag, which does make perfect sense because they have their equal fire rates and damages. So obviously, these stats should be identical, and the only place where the AK-47 will actually have an advantage over the STG is going to be in movement stats, being about 1% better in a few areas, including aim down sight speed, movement, and strafe speed. But if we look a little bit further into it, we're going to have equal sprint to fire times and equal ADS movements. So I don't really see that being enough of an advantage to even consider the AK in any scenario, being a sub, 
being a sniper support or being a long range option, there's just zero reason for you to ever use the AK-47 again in this current state of Warzone. And with the class setup I'm about to be giving you, it will actually improve the TTK of the SGG while actually making it super accurate and easy to use. If you guys can do me a quick favor and like the video so it can reach more people, and if you need help knowing what the meta weapons and class setups are, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be having a lot of Warzone Pacific videos coming out that you're not going to want to miss. We've made it to the SCG best class setup, and I'm going to be giving you a few variations of the build, and then you can pick which one is best for you. I'm going to start off with how I use it, and it isn't the most accurate build because of this vital perk I'm using right here, which increases torso damage and lowers recoil and accuracy. But this allows you to lower your TTK with chest shots instead of only being able to do it by getting two headshots. And I can still control the recoil well, especially with tap firing at super long ranges. Now there's two other options here and these won't actually hurt your recoil and accuracy, therefore obviously making the gun more accurate. And the first one's gonna be focus, which I'm hovering over right now, which just helps with your flinch resistance, which is a big problem with weapons mid gunfight. So this is actually pretty good to help your accuracy during gunfights because you don't flinch as much and your gun isn't kicking too badly and then the other option is going to be acrobatics here with movement speed and sprinting move speed which i know zones are a big issue on this map because of all the verticality and the mountains that you have to climb while rotating to zone i personally think vital and being able to lower the ttk of chest shots is more valuable if you want more accurate switch off of vital and then rear grip i have hatch grip on here because vertical recoil is super easy to control you just pull back on your mouse your analog stick and you're right on target horizontal recoil is what makes guns challenging to use so I find the hatch grip to be very valuable here, making the STG that much better. The other option here is gonna be polymer grip because you get accuracy and recoil during sustained fire plus flinch resistance. So obviously being able to hold down your trigger means you're gonna be able to get the top TTK. If you have to tap fire, you're obviously gonna be lowering a little bit because your fire rate's gonna be lower in essence because you aren't gonna be shooting as fast as you can. But I think the hatch grip to prevent horizontal recoil is more important than everything else here is pretty locked in minus the optic because if you want to change it for something else you can just make sure it's 2.5 times or better that's all preference based for me i also have this customization nice to have such a clean sight with this g16 it's my personal favorite feel free to change it now the last thing i want to say is make sure to use c4 on this loadout and i'm going to show you why right now oh they're taking it far it's not good at us now they're going away right they're coming oh, shit. towards us i don't i do i don't either i have a vision box Nice, good shit. That's honestly lit. Oh my hey. god, I love C4! <laughs> I'm sure you do. I just got a quad! There you go, Nick. Uh, uh, now you're shooting. Oh. Fuck, nasty. Fuck, nasty. Oh, yeah. nasty. I'm hitting for armor on the side, I'm kind of frying. I'm frying the guy on the side. I disabled it, I disabled it, I disabled it. I disabled it. I, disabled it. I know, I disabled it. The guys want it, the guys want it. Not downed one, downed one. Let's go, boy! 